The NFL preseason is over. We are on the brink of NFL week one. So let's wrap up the preseason in style with my number one dynasty takeaway from all 32 NFL teams. Let's go. What? What? Why are you shaking your head? You're welcome. Before we launch into my 32 takeaways, I just want to remind you that you can get 10% off any plan at the Fantasy Points website using my code PURE10. Just head over there, fantasypoints.com slash plans. You can get the NFL premium package. You can get the Fantasy Points data suite. Anything you need to stay on top of your game this NFL season, you can find at fantasypoints.com slash plans. All right, we're going to go in alphabetical order here. So let's start with the Arizona Cardinals. My takeaway is that we need to be patient with Trey Benson. He is the clear backup to James Conner right now. He's probably going to have a limited role early in the season, but he did get the majority of the carries with the starters in preseason. The team cut Michael Carter. They're keeping Amari DiMarcato as a third down back, kind of a specialist back, but Trey Benson is going to be the guy if anything happens to James Conner, whether it be an injury or just a drop-off in ability. So be patient with Trey Benson. Might be a great mid-season buy-low candidate. Next up, we've got the Atlanta Falcons, and we learned very little about this team in the preseason because they didn't play any of their starters during the preseason. In fact, they rested most of their backups, but there were three wide receivers that sat out the entire preseason. One of those, obviously, Drake London. The other two, Darnell Mooney and Ray Ray McLeod. So those two right now are your locked-in starters on offense, and that's great news for Drake London, that he's going to be playing alongside those two Every single snap, Drake London is set up to smash playing alongside those other wide receivers who aren't exactly the best target earners. So, you know, the hype behind him this season is justified and he is set to potentially be a big riser in Dynasty this season. For the Baltimore Ravens, let's talk about Rashad Bateman. He got an extension this offseason and he received more praise from his coaching staff than just about any player in the league this offseason. The, the wide receiver depth behind Zay Flowers is non-existent. So we're probably going to see Rashad Bateman in close to an every down role for this team. This is year four, and we've been playing this same game for a couple of years now. But Bateman has dealt with injuries. Everything coming out of Ravens camp is positive. There are worse players that you could throw a dart on in Dynasty at this point with his value hovering around a, a random third round pick. So, you know cautiously optimistic that we could see some signs of life from Rashad Bateman this season. For the Buffalo Bills, it's the wide receivers that I'm interested in. Keon Coleman locked up a starting job for this team. He played all the snaps with the starters in his preseason action. But the other wide receiver that seems like a locked-in starter for this team is a bit of a surprise, and it's Mac Hollins, who played the majority of the snaps outside with the starters as well in the preseason game that he was healthy for. That leaves Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir basically fighting for one spot. Now, this could obviously change during the season, but at least to start the year, I'd be very hesitant to rely on either player as a weekly starter. The Carolina Panthers put Jonathan Brooks on the pup list, which isn't necessarily shocking, but he is going to be out for at least four games. And that sets Chuba Hubbard up as a great target for running back needy teams. If you have more of a zero RB or hero RB build, he is just a, a pretty cheap running back that you know you can plug in for at least four weeks of production and is going to have some you know, contingent value even once Brooks returns, if he's being eased in or if he has any kind of a, a setback, Hubbard is just going to be a very reliable player for you. So I think there are worse guys that you could add to your dynasty team heading into the NFL season. Moving on to the Chicago Bears, Cole Komet is looking pretty unstartable in fantasy football and is a massive sell in dynasty. He actually played fewer snaps with the starters in preseason than Gerald Everett, who has previous ties to the Bears' new offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron. Komet was already going to have a tough time earning targets, sharing the field with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Roma Dunze, but it looks like this is trending towards a full-blown tight end by committee, and I want absolutely nothing to do with it. While a lot of rookie wide receivers have locked up roles in their offenses this preseason, the same cannot be said for Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver Jermaine Burton. I wouldn't expect Jermaine Burton to make much of an impact this season, and if so, it won't be until later in the year. He was playing well into the third, sometimes fourth quarter of preseason games. He seems firmly behind Andre Yoshivas and possibly Trenton Irwin as well on this team. So despite the fact that he did make some good plays in the preseason, he's just not very high on the depth chart right now. 
That's not to say you have to go out and sell him or panic. He might even be an interesting buy low candidate if he makes minimal impact through the first half of the season because the expectation is he'll get some action sooner or later. The Cleveland Browns put Nick Chubb on the pup list, so he will miss at least four games to start the season. Again, not super shocking given the timeline of Nick Chubb's injury and at his age as a running back, uh, but that means Jerome Ford is going to be the dude for this team in the first four weeks of the season. They actually released Deonta Foreman as well, so it looks like Pierre Strong is the primary backup to Jerome Ford. He's going to get a lot of work. I don't necessarily know that that equates to a lot of fantasy upside because last season we saw him in this type of a role and he was really just a low end running back too. So if anyone is super excited about Jerome Ford, I'd be willing to sell him, kind of sell him high on this first four weeks of production. If you need to start him, go ahead and keep him. But otherwise you might be able to get a better return now as opposed to later. As gross as it might seem, the Dallas Cowboys backfield is pretty interesting for fantasy football, considering neither of the options are very expensive, and we know there are going to be fantasy points in this backfield. My money's on Rico Dowdle, just being the younger player than Ezekiel Elliott, being something of a mystery box. Not that I think he's likely to be a superstar talent, but we just haven't seen that much to know one way or the other what type of ability he has. He's gotten a lot of positive reviews during training camp, and Mike McCarthy has uh, described him as a three-down player who's not actually going to play as much special teams this year so he can focus on the offense. So it seems like he has a clear role, could be an even larger role than we expect if Ezekiel Elliott is really and truly washed and the Cowboys are kind of willing to admit that to themselves. Oh, and before you ask, I am absolutely not worried about Dalvin Cook. The Denver Broncos were one of the more interesting backfields to monitor during the NFL preseason. In the end, Samaj P. Ryan was cut by the team, which is huge for the other three backs there, Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin, and Audric Estime. I think all three are good investments in Dynasty at their current prices. Javante Williams is the one who figures to lead this backfield in touches, and I think he has some pretty legit upside. Still just 24 years old, a uh, year removed from the ACL injury. I think he could get a lot of volume, and I think he could be pretty successful with it. So he would be my priority to target in Dynasty. But again, stashing McLaughlin and Estime is not a bad idea because this backfield is going to produce a lot of fantasy points for running backs. And we have reason to believe both of these players are talented. None of the starters for the Detroit Lions played any preseason football. So let's go deep here. I think Sion Vaki is a pretty interesting add in deeper dynasty leagues. He was a safety and running back in college. He was drafted to play running back, looked good in the preseason, made the 53-man roster. Now he's really just battling against Craig Reynolds to be the RB3 on this team, which could put him within striking distance of some serious contingent value. In a backfield where there are two viable running backs, he could only be an injury away from having a decent-sized role. I don't have a super specific take for the Green Bay Packers, just that this is going to be a frustrating offense for fantasy. I think there's going to be plenty of points to go around, but just based on the route participation and snap shares of these offensive weapons, I think it's going to be pretty hard to predict which player to start each and every week. Between Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, Dontavian Wicks, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft... I think it's going to be hard to know where the fantasy points are coming from in any given week. It's not to say that they're all cells, um, but just that we're going to need a few weeks of actual NFL action to kind of sort through this offense and see who the real targets are. Moving on to the Houston Texans now, it looks like Cam Akers still exists. After two Achilles tears, I really can't say that I thought he would ever find his way onto a football field again. Pretty awesome what he's been able to do with the Houston Texans this preseason. He's actually fought his way into the conversation for RB2 on this team. He made the 53-man roster. Damian Pierce has struggled. So I think he's definitely worth an ad if he's on waivers in your dynasty league. Why not? This is going to be a great offense. Joe Mixon has already had an injury this offseason. You might as well have Cam Akers just in case he's the handcuff for this team. On the Indianapolis Colts, I'm getting excited about A.D. Mitchell, who has been manning the slot, actually, in the preseason with Josh Downs out. I don't know that he stays in the slot once Downs returns, but it's clear that the team views him as more of a versatile wide receiver. I think he eventually does overtake Alec Pierce for a role on the outside, but the fact that he can play inside and outside, that's good for his value. That's good for him getting opportunities early in the season. And I think you could actually see Downs play outside a little bit he had some success there as a rookie. These guys could actually swap back and forth. But either way, good signs for Mitchell. And despite me not loving his prospect profile, it does actually look like he's set up for success in his rookie season.
Brian Thomas is another rookie wide receiver who could get off to a hot start with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has already locked up a full-time starting role on the outside. He's going to be playing across from Gabe Davis, which is also good news for him, just given that Gabe Davis has really never proven himself to be a high-end target earner in the league. So Brian Thomas could emerge as the wide receiver one for this team sooner than later. His skill set is a perfect fit for Trevor Lawrence. Former NFL insider Adam Kaplan actually laid this out on the Fantasy Points Insider Show that Gabe Davis is set up to take more of the Zay Jones role, which is more of the field stretching, nine routes type of role, whereas Brian Thomas is set up to take more of the Calvin Ridley role with some of those deep crossing routes. And that's going to be the more fantasy friendly role, in my opinion. The Kansas City Chiefs signed Samaj P. Ryan after he was released by the Broncos. And some people seem to be worried about Isaiah Pacheco. I don't think that we need to be worried about Isaiah Pacheco. Samaj P. Ryan probably going to take a lot of the two-minute drill and long down and distance snaps. So that's been his specialty. That's probably why they brought him in to play kind of that Jarek McKinnon role. But even down the stretch last season when Pacheco was averaging over 18 points per game, he never got to 30% even long down and distance snaps. Uh, so I don't think we need to worry too much about his upside. He should still be set up for a great season with a lot of touchdown opportunity in the Chiefs offense. For the Las Vegas Raiders, you should be excited about Brock Bowers. During the preseason, he was lined up all over the formation in the snaps that he played. He played in the backfield. He lined up out wide. He lined up as a traditional tight end. The team clearly has a lot of plans to use him in creative ways in this offense. And unlike other players that are like pure gadget players, he can play the traditional stuff, but he's just such a tremendous athlete. They even used him like this at Georgia. He's such a tremendous athlete that they're going to want to get the ball in his hands in as many different ways as they possibly can, and that's going to be great for his fantasy utilization. On to the Los Angeles Chargers. Kamani Vidal is not dead yet. It looked like for a while that it was going to be over. He was left off of the initial projections for the 53-man roster, but he impressed in preseason. He forced his way back into the coach's plans. They released Isaiah Spiller. They just released Jarrett Patterson so they could bring in Hassan Haskins as an extra running back who's purely a special teams guy. So Vidal enters the year as the team's clear RB3. Now, he might not be active on game days right away if they want to keep Haskins active for special teams, but he is just an injury away. Uh, to either Dobbins, who we know has been consistently unhealthy throughout his career, or Gus Edwards, who's a 29-year-old running back who's never really handled high volume for an extended period of time. So you should be stashing Vidal. You should still be trying to get him added into deals. The, there's a lot of upside here if he finds himself in a starting role for the Chargers. And staying in Los Angeles, the Rams are very excited about Blake Corum. He has gotten rave reviews this offseason. I don't think we need to do anything crazy like moving Corum ahead of Kyron Williams, but he's certainly going to have a role in this offense. There is going to be massive contingent upside for Corum if Kyron gets injured or somehow falls out of favor with the coaching staff. I don't think we have to overreact to the Kyron Williams punt return stuff, but it's certainly not a bad thing for Blake Corum. All that being said, we might be looking at an early sell window for Corum if people are going to get way too excited just imagining what it would be like for him to be the full-time starter in this offense because I still think that's fairly unlikely to actually happen this season so if someone's willing to offer you like early second round value I'm inclined to take it the Miami Dolphins have three good running backs Devon A. Chan and Raheem Mostert were obviously amazing last season but they added Jalen Wright in the fourth round and he looked really good this preseason he is incredibly fast and he's a great fit for what this offense is trying to do Wright kind of has two-way contingent upside if anything happens to A. Chan or Mostert just because this offense is capable of supporting multiple running backs so Wright is a great player to have on your team right now and um, he should be ready to, to step into a more permanent role if and when Raheem Mostert gets hurt or remembers that he is a 32-year-old running back. I have another deep stash here for the Minnesota Vikings, and that's Jalen Naylor. I don't think we learned a whole lot about the Vikings starters this preseason other than the transition from J.J. McCarthy to Sam Darnold post-injury, but we did learn that Jalen Naylor has locked up the wide receiver three position. He actually sat out of the last preseason game and albeit on a very, very small sample, he has flashed some level of efficiency when he's been on the field so far in his short NFL career. So going into year three, he could be a name to monitor and he's in a good offense. So at the very least, he's worth a speculative ad. 
just to see what his role actually looks like in the first couple weeks of the year. Moving over to the New England Patriots, I did actually touch on this in our last Dynasty video, but it's worth reiterating that Jalen Polk is a full-time starter for this team, and he's going to be competing in week one with the likes of KJ Osborne, Tyquan Thornton, and a banged up Hunter Henry for targets. So he could actually get off to a pretty hot start. I really won't be surprised if he is the lead target earner for this team right from the jump. Those other guys, they're just proven mediocre talents. So I think Polk could actually be a big dynasty riser and it could happen very quickly. For the New Orleans Saints, I think Taysom Hill could be a legit fantasy tight end this year. In fact, Fantasy Points own Jake Tribby thinks he could push for top 10 status. He played 65% of the snaps with the starters in the preseason. He played multiple snaps at running back, fullback, tight end, outside. They're going to use this guy all over the field. And he has arguably more contingent value than anybody else in the league because he can benefit from injuries at literally any position. Running back, wide receiver, tight end, whatever happens the solution for the Saints might just be more touches for Taysom Hill. Moving on to the New York Giants, I think you need to be buying Tyrone Tracy. He looked like the clear RB2 in the first preseason game before he suffered a low ankle sprain. I think some of the heat has kind of worn off, just people not seeing him, but he's going to slide back into that role when he's healthy. And Devin Singletary is not the most insurmountable obstacle in the world. So he could have some serious dynasty value moving forward. For the New York Jets, Braylon Allen looks like a pretty high value handcuff right now. Brees Hall obviously is locked into that RB1 role, but Braylon Allen locked up the RB2 role this preseason, and he's reportedly looked good even as a pass catcher. So he could take on a pretty large role if anything were to happen to Brees Hall. For the Philadelphia Eagles, I'd like to talk about the newest member of the offense, Jahan Dotson. Uh, he has no more dynasty value remaining. I mean, he was already terrible in year two. He had under one yards per out run. That's the type of thing you just don't really come back from as a fantasy wide receiver. But the fact that the commanders were willing to trade him to Philadelphia when they're trying to surround their young quarterback with weapons and the best wide receivers they had behind Dotson were Alameda Zacchaeus and Deami Brown, that says a lot about Dotson. I would sell him for really anything that you can get at this point if there's someone who still thinks that there's opportunity for him in this offense. On the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think you need to be avoiding Pat Fryermuth in fantasy and in dynasty. He had a pretty low route rate in the preseason, and we know Arthur Smith is always up to some shenanigans when it comes to personnel. It looks like he's going to keep Darnell Washington and Michael Pruitt involved in this offense for reasons beyond our understanding, but that's going to limit Fryermuth's upside and lower his floor. So I'm just kind of staying away from him at this point. Moving on to the San Francisco 49ers, Jordan Mason needs to be a priority add in Dynasty. If he is somehow on your waiver wire, you need to spend everything, all your fab, go get Jordan Mason. He is now one of the better handcuff options in the league now that Elijah Mitchell is on season-ending uh, IR. Mason was already overtaking Mitchell as the RB2, so clearly he has shown the coaching staff something that they didn't see in previous seasons. Look, he's just one Christian McCaffrey calf strain away from high-end RB2, low-end RB1 weekly production. On the Seattle Seahawks, don't sleep on Kenneth Walker. He's been getting constant praise from a new coaching staff that says that he's capable of being a full-blown workhorse. They let him sit out the whole preseason. Zach Charbonnet did play a little bit, having to, he has the RB2 job locked up, but they did want to see him a little bit. They did not need to see Kenneth Walker, and it sounds like he could legitimately get more passing down work this year. We know he's a great rusher. If he can add the receiving element, he he has a lot of upside in fantasy. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think Jalen McMillan is going to continue to be a big dynasty riser. He has already won the wide receiver three job from Trey Palmer, and he has proven an ability to play outside, which was a big question based on his college profile. But Chris Godwin will be in the slot, which means Trey Palmer, at least in 11 personnel, is going to be playing outside. We know Mike Evans is a great receiver, but he is 31. The end can come fast for these older receivers. In the meantime, you know, Jalen McMillan, Probably not going to be a guy you start every week, but we should have optimism about his ability to play, and there should be opportunity opening up for him in the future. On the Tennessee Titans, I think Tony Pollard and Ty J Spears can both be fantasy relevant. These guys pretty much split work about 50-50 in the preseason with Tony Pollard typically getting the first crack at things, and they're just going to throw the ball a lot. They're going to throw the ball to the running backs a lot. I think this offense could be a little bit better than people think, and I think that the they could actually lead the league in running back targets as well. So I'm interested in both these guys as startable RB2s every week, and if one of them can kind of cannibalize some work from the other, there's a lot of upside for either back. 
And finally, we've got through the entire alphabet. We're looking at the Washington Commanders here as our last team. My takeaway is not a super fun one. It's that Zach Ertz is going to score more fantasy points than you would like. He sat out the whole preseason. He is the de facto clear starter for this team at tight end that just traded away Jahan Dotson, really has no target earners outside of Terry McLaurin. I think, especially early in the season, if you have a need at tight end, you could do a lot worse than throwing Zach Ertz into your lineup, especially in tight end premium formats, because he could rack up a lot of receptions, give you a lot of like six receptions for 30 yards type of games. And sometimes at the tight end position, that's all you need. Whew, we made it. That's one dynasty takeaway for every NFL team. We've wrapped up the NFL preseason. We are ready now for week one. Make sure to subscribe to Fantasy Points to catch all of the in-season coverage so you don't miss anything during the NFL season. Good luck out there in week one, and I will see you guys next time.